Very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to yet another ULaw webinar. In today's webinar, we're going to be covering the document management component of uh, ULaw practice and how we've looked to simplify how you capture and store document management in the cloud or within your local desktop computer as you prefer. Um, I say I love my friends to join in to, for this webinar. Uh, quick housekeeping would kindly request you to use the chat window um, to basically ask any of your questions. Today's webinar is not accredited for any CPD session, but we're hoping that it will be a, a fun-filled session. And it's going to be a bit of a demonstration of the product, if you will. Um, so it's not just slide share. We're actually going to be demonstrating to how you would go about storing documents within ULaw in the cloud or how you would go about storing documents or generating documents and storing it locally as well. And uh, look forward to hearing your questions, okay? So before I get started again with any ULA webinar, we have an agenda and so does this webinar today. I'd like to set the context. As you probably know, we are a cloud-based legal accounting and practice management software. Uh, we're hosted in the Canadian soil. We're a Canadian company ourselves. And we obviously ensure the highest levels of security. But when it comes to document management, what we're really trying to do is integrate with existing leaders in this space without having to reinvent the wheel, where we give you the capability to store these documents that you generate either out of ULaw itself or documents that you can bring from you know, your current paper or whether you scan these documents from other sources, we leave it to your discretion to store that either within the cloud storage that we integrate with or within your local computer. Okay? What we're going to demonstrate today is some of the advantages of using the cloud option and how that integration with ULaw facilitates a much more seamless way of storing and accessing documents, all from um, a single user interface. Okay. Now, when we talked about some of the key players that are in this industry, um, we'll have to consider the top three or four players. Including the likes of Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, The Box. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about some comparisons of their different price plans, look at some of the advantages and disadvantage of these cloud players. We look at how ULaw today is integrated with both Google Drive as well as OneDrive, which is a Microsoft product. We'll give you some examples of how we do that, both, both from a matter perspective and from an accounting perspective, some interesting use cases there. And we would also look at um, how you can access these documents from um, ULaw, right, within ULaw, within the context of the matter or within the context of what that document means in the life cycle or the use case of uh, the matter that you're using, okay? Okay, so we look at some of the positives or advantages or pros of some of these cloud-based document storage products. So we look at maybe the top two, I would say Google Drive and OneDrive, Dropbox and Box definitely following very closely. It fundamentally comes down to how cost effective is it? How secure are these sites? Okay. And uh, the kind of accessibility points that you have, and I'm going to be using it as one of the use cases. Do these products have a very simple to use app on your phone that allows you to um, access as well as upload content from any device? and thereby giving you that anytime, anywhere access to any of these documents. And how do we provide as ULaw the access to those documents within our product as well? Security, very important. Equally important is the opportunity for these product companies to do automated backups. So as a legal accounting product, we do our the backup of all the data that you store with the new law practice today on a very timely and regular basis. And we do have a 256-bit encryption security that gives you the peace of mind that you're working with uh, a highly secure cloud infrastructure. And in addition to that, today, obviously, EULA has invested heavily 
in a two-factor authentication that also validates the device that you're using to access all of this information. Okay, so that should hopefully give you a bit of a leap of faith about the security components of accessing these documents on the cloud. But that being said, we want to play fair to all our clients and all our partners, and so we do give you the full flexibility to store documents um, even on your local desktop, but obviously there are some advantages and disadvantages to that. Another very important aspect to considering some of these cloud players are the key capabilities of being able to store documents across multiple file formats. Okay, so as a legal professional, I'm sure you would appreciate, as someone who's running a business, that some of these documents that you're going to bring in into your firm are going to have multiple file formats, from Word documents to PDF documents, sometimes even presentations that you may have to make to a client, um, as well as scanned documents, whether that's related to your case, or most importantly, the receipts and the documents that you have to store, both for disbursements as well as for your office expenses, could be of various different file formats. Could be JPEG, maybe old school BMP, uh, GIFs, right? So you need a cloud storage system that can accommodate across all these different file formats and give you the same level of accessibility and quality of uh, document rendering. Okay, so we have considered and looked at these four products, Drive, uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, and then you have Dropbox and Box as the four significant players in the space. And we are work continuing to invest and work with other, some of the Canadian players as well. Um, and we hope to have that integrated as a big part of our roadmap. Um, one quick point to note is the cost. Uh, at a very high level, Google Drive provides you uh, with about 15 gigabytes of free space. In fact, OneDrive, um, if you actually sign up with OneDrive and if you actually have it as part of your Windows 10 plan, um, they actually give you access to about one terabyte. So really depending on your comfort zone, what you're already used to, um, if you are a Windows player versus are you an iOS player, it really comes down to your comfort and zone, but you do have these options and there are very cost-effective competitive pricing that these companies offer you. For further information, obviously, you can check out the different pricing plans that they have on their websites. And this presentation, obviously, will be made available to you as well as part of our channel. Now, obviously, let's look at some of the, uh, the cons. Okay, So first and foremost, there is a very uh, inherent need for the widely acclaimed internet. Okay. You do need an internet to be able to access these documents. But that being said, you are able to now take some quick, sh I would say, makeshift arrangements, make those. For example, most of these products come with their own app. So you are able to scan that receipt and store it on your phone. And when you have access to the internet, you can always upload it right from your phone into these storage systems. And we're going to take one of those use cases today as well to kind of walk you through that. Storage limits, again, no more. Um, really a limitation these days with the price being what it is. But if you really were to consider it as a limitation, we'll have to put it out there anyways because you do have comparative pricing. If you needed more than you know, a terabyte or even 25, 30 gigabytes, depending on your area of practice, then obviously it's an incremental pricing from there on. Uh, it would be really important that, um, that you understand the service level agreement that these different providers provide you with. There's a certain level of due diligence that we've done as a partner. Um, most of these players actually have a 99.9% .9 uptime, um, which means that there is that you know that very small percentage of time where for you know for server um, you know for ensuring that they're doing a bit of a backup or there's been some kind of service that's being done that they will be down for a very very short period of time. Uh, but that's a very standard thing with any cloud storage or any cloud-based system in today's context. Okay. And last but not the least is truly the perception. Um, it really comes down to your perceived lack of control. 
the deeds are on the cloud or in the cloud, as people understand it to be. Um, and there's always the old school thought process of uh, I need my documents in, you know, right in my desktop. I need to copy it into my hard drive. Um, so yeah, so there's always going to be that component, which is go only going to go away with time and with confidence and having used it. Okay. And the reason why I'm, I'm really trying to get through these slides, to be quite honest, is kind of really get to the exciting part of it, of the demonstration today, where I can actually show you all of this in action, because that's more powerful than walking through slides, I'm sure. Um, what does that integration of Google Drive or OneDrive in this matter with EULA mean? Okay, so if you are a current EULA user, or if you're considering a legal accounting practice management software, these are some of the benefits that we as a product can provide you. First and foremost, it's um, we integrate with these products, meaning there's a one-time password share, and after that there's, uh, there's no need for you to re-enter um, into these different drives. It's all integrated as a single sign-on right with the new law. And as I said, it's a one-time setup. You have the opportunity now to drag and drop documents right into the different cloud-based systems and make it readily available, automatically available right with the new law as well. Um, one quick point to note is that we do offer, or there are products out there that we integrate with that are client-side encryption, such as Boxcryptor and Cypherx. And these are products that you can purchase retail price that gives you the extra protection and um, sense of confidence, if you will, or peace of mind that encrypts these documents right on your desktop, on your client side. Okay, so we do encrypt and store all of this in a secure mode in our server side, which is the cloud storage. Uh, in addition to that, if you really need that extra security prior, you know, um, then you are able to use any of these products, download them into your the device that you would use, and actually encrypt them even before you upload it into any cloud storage system. So anyone with that password only those would be able to even retrieve that information, okay? Bottom line, it comes down to what are the benefits of such storage and integrated document management software. Uh, it makes life easier. The fact that it's a bit of a drag and drop, it makes it easier for you to organize it. It gives you a bit of a, um, a bit of sensibility of how you manage documents. Uh, brings you into kind of a routine, if you will, or a discipline that any time you have a document available, you can readily scan it and make it available um, and actually be worry-free that the document's not going to go away, it's not going to be deleted, um, you know, the laptop's not going to be stolen, the hard drive's not going to crash, those documents are going to be available for you. Um, many of these tools actually give you a very solid audit log or an activity history of what's happened with these documents. You can also go to the extent of using the sharing capabilities of these products such as OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive to share these uploaded documents uh, with your clients, right? So you are now able to upload a retainer letter, let's say, or a receipt into a folder and be able to give access to that to your clients so that they can sign it and send it back. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to use these document storage systems that can make your lives easier, organize documents, make it intuitive for you to share those documents as well. And without any further delay, let me jump into logging into ULaw practice and I'll show you how we integrate with um, not just one, I'll show you both Google Drive as well as OneDrive and we'll take some some easy use cases and some interesting ones as well. For those who joined us today, we we'll welcome you. And for those who don't know uh, who you all is, we are a proud Canadian legal accounting and practice management software company. And we serve Canadian legal professionals. Um, and our goal really is to provide a very convenient, cost-effective, and compliant cloud-based legal accounting software. Okay? So let me shift gears real quick. 
and I'm going to be using, for those who have joined me before in my demo, I've used the Roger Moore Playground account that we provide access to all our clients as part of their trial. And I'm going to take a simple use case. Okay. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and add a client with the new law. I'm just going to say Mr. Jeremy Bean. Okay. Give Mr. Bean an address. And that's it for the purposes of today's demonstration. I'm just going to keep it fairly simple. I've just created that contact or client, if you will, Mr. Jeremy Bean. And I'm going to take one step further and actually create a matter for Jeremy Bean as well. Let's say we've gone through the whole conflict screening component of it. I'm going to go ahead and click on the matter button and just create a very simple file. Okay, so you're going to see how document storage is not force-fitted. It's almost part of that workflow, and it's available and we're in meaningful places. So let's say this is a slip and fall, and I'm going to mark it as in small claims matter. Perfect. Let me go ahead and save that information. As you know, we are a cloud-based product. All this information and data is available to you on the secure 256-bit encryption uh, cloud storage. Now, the real component comes to how do I now start to use the document collaboration? So obviously, you could start to dock it. You could start to bring in your retainers, but I'm not going to focus my attention on that. I'm going to focus my attention on this tab, or I'd like for you to look at this particular tab called Documents. Okay? A prerequisite, and really the documents is your gateway to connecting with any of these third-party stored systems. But a prerequisite that many of our clients go through as part of their training is really right up here. Right up here in our settings is how we give you the capability to maximize the customization of ULAW to best serve your firm, okay? right from rates, right from headers, logos, to details about your company, as well as different docket types. We've got all of that. A very important component when it comes to document storage is under matter is this one line item called matter documents where we ask you configure a product that you would be using to store your matter documents. And we're going to evolve with other levels of folder structure, but fundamentally this is where you would choose. By default, this would be set to none. And now you get to choose either Google Drive or OneDrive. And the Dropbox and Box integration is not too far away. We, um, we focused on Drive, Google Drive and OneDrive first. I believe Dropbox and Box will be available by end of March. But let's, for the pers purpose of this demo, I'm just going to stick to OneDrive to begin with. That was one of the questions asked by many of our clients from our previous demonstration. So I'm going to first show you OneDrive. And then we'll show you Google Drive as well. Now, once you've chosen the appropriate product um, that you would like ULAW to be integrated with, you would jump back into the Matters tab. And you would hit the Documents. And for the first time users, you would authorize the connection. Now, I want it to be all prepared and set up, so I've already authorized once you see the, uh, the columns, you know that we made that connection. You can obviously hit refresh to be double sure. But once you see the columns, you know for sure that we've connected ULAW with your OneDrive. Okay. Now, I also have the OneDrive account that I've connected with open right here. And what happens is when you make that connection, one of the first steps that we do automatically is we access in a very secure way we access that OneDrive and we create this one folder called ULaw Practice. Okay. Under that we give you the option of two subfolders, one called Matter and the other accounts. 
Now in this case, we have a very new file, JB98489. This is Mr. Jeremy Bean. So under the matter, you should see that new, uh, and that's one of the highlights, which is recently added. You can see it says just now. Sharing is still private. You can change that as well. And if you actually open up that folder, you can see there's really nothing there. Now let's start to ge you know, generate a few documents. And if I look at my compliance panel, I have some very interesting documents that I can generate right away. So let me look at my client ID verification. Download. Now if you notice, I mentioned earlier, this document is actually downloaded to your local desktop. Okay, So at this time, when you open it, it is at your discretion of whether you would like to continue saving it in your local desktop or save it in the cloud. Obviously, if you save it in your local desktop, the onus and responsibility is to you to manage the folder structure so that you're not, again, searching for this information. You have a structured way, and we request that, if possible, that you follow the same structure. But it's obviously you, the client's responsibility to store it because we wouldn't know where they've stored it. But if you were to store it in the cloud, and that's how I'm going to show it to you today, you would see the value-added relationship. So here is that verification of identity. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make some changes. Okay. I'll say I've got the driver's license. I can further store this or download this to wherever I like. Okay. Or in addition, I can just drag and drop it right into my OneDrive. Obviously, you can take advantage of many of the capabilities and features that OneDrive provides to begin with. Okay? So you can right-click, preview that document. You can share it with other folks, including your clients, in a very secured way. Um, right? And one of the beauties of um, OneDrive is that it does give you access to open up native Microsoft documents. So if you have a document in Word, it opens up in Word, right? If it's PPTX, it would open it up in PPTX. In this case, it's a PDF. Perfect. So now you have physically stored this digital copy. Now that sounds like an oxymoron, but it truly, the storage is the OneDrive, but the context is ULaw. So now let's go back to ULaw. What is the context? Now that was a client ID verification done from Mr. Jeremy Bean for this particular matter, right? So when you come back to documents, what do you see? Having made that connection, you see that that PDF is available. If you were to click on it, provided you have obviously access with OneDrive, you're going to be able to open that file right from your wall. There you go. Okay. Same document, open right within the context. Okay, so that's one of the first most fundamental connections that you would find between ULaw and Beat OneDrive or Google Drive. Same thing applies to Google Drive. Very similar concept. Okay. Now let's look at some additional documents. So you've done client tender verification. In fact, let's go one step further. And let us say that um, you did that verification and you had used the driver's license, right? And let me just, let's say I've scanned the driver's license into my laptop. So I'm able to drag and drop. And this was not a document that was generated by ULaw. This was a document that you scanned. Maybe you took a photo of this driver's license or maybe you ran it through your scanner. Now you upload it. Let's take how you would upload it into any Windows folder. In this case, it's a cloud-based Windows folder with the same structure format. And when you do that, just as you would expect, if you were to hit the Refresh button, you're going to notice that it connects with OneDrive and it brings back the two documents that are involved. Okay. Let's 
give it a couple of seconds. some reason. Now the quick question is, can I create subfolders? Absolutely, yes. Most definitely, you can create your own subfolders, and there are those two documents. And if you open up, oh, I may have clicked on the wrong one. It's chronologically arranged, so you can sort this by when it was created. So this was the first document. This was the second document. You can open up. Now to one of my points, now we're introducing a new file type, which is that of a JPEG. Okay? But keep in mind, you're storing all of this within the same infrastructure. Okay? That was a good example. Now let me take an example. Uh, someone's asked me about a Google Drive integration, which is very natural. So OneDrive, very similar to Google Drive. You basically go into your settings, choose OneDrive. Just like how I authorized it, it's going to ask you for which account. If you have multiple OneDrive accounts, choose your appropriate account, and it connects to it. And whatever folder structure we've created for the appropriate matter file, you're able to throw in all of those documents. Let me shift here from my OneDrive experience into Google Drive. Okay. So within OneDrive, so let's say, um, okay, just for the same client, JB, you could basically say, New folder, ID, and you can basically categorically categorize and then, you know, you can say client identification, you can basically say uh, invoices. So under the same JB file, you can then create subfolders as well. Okay, and here's the driver's license that we just opened up. Now, to switch to Gmail or your Google Drive account, I'll go to Settings. Go back to Google Drive. I will hit Save. Wait for it to save the settings. Let me go to Contacts. I'll just create it a new client, just to keep it simple. I'll say Shelly was a client referral. I'll go ahead, click Save and Matter. So we save the contact and jump right into the matter as well. Okay, that's kind of a shortcut, if you will. We'll create a different type of matter, and now I'll show you um, the capability of how we integrate with uh, Google Drive. Again, exactly what you should expect the experience. It's just that the Google Drive is a different product by itself. So some of the features and functionalities are different. And we'll show you some of the collaboration aspects to that as well which I like really with the whole uh, Gmail, Google Drive. All righty, so let me go ahead and say this was a fence issue. And the starting point for that collaboration truly from a matter perspective is that of the folder number, of file number, okay? Because that's the unique reference number with the new law and that's what gives you the whole relationship. So now if I were to go ahead and refresh, and let me open up my drive, you can see we've automatically created a folder you will practice as a folder called Matter. And for Shelly James, you see the same, the same concept, 
come here. You see the matter name. We copy over the matter name. It was created by myself. And you could do almost the same thing. Okay. You could go ahead, go to compliance. You can generate maybe a conflict screening report. Copy it over. Right? And you can do the same things too. You can right click and you can create your new folder and your subfolders as well. You can also go to the extent of saying, all right, let me say I got an initial client interview, client meeting. So with every step in your workflow, I'll change this to a flat rate. Maybe I charge $200. Right? Because it's all part of that legal workflow of what you do. And there's documents at each and every step of that workflow. So I'll just go ahead and generate an invoice. I'll skip the preview. Go ahead and generate that invoice for 200 plus tax, 226. Now we have clients that basically download this. They, in fact, sign this. Uh, and you can electronically sign it if you have like an Adobe sign or Echo sign. Um, we have clients who do that. They electronically sign it, and they basically upload it into their Google Drive, right? And now you can basically share this or get a shareable link, and then they compose an email, and they send this particular link to their clients. So the client gets an email with a link to this, and they click on it, and our clients as the legal professional get a notification from Google Drive that their end client, let's say Shelly, opened up that document. So they know very well that the email and Shelly has actually viewed the invoice, which is very, very pretty cool. Now you can go rename this document, right? You can add a description to it. You can say, Invoice generated and link shared. And if you had multiple lawyers or paralegals who are all working on the same firm, you can collaborate. You can basically write notes on the document itself and share it with others in the firm, provided you all share the same enterprise Gmail account. Like how we do at ULaw, it gives you the capability to share it. So once you've done that, if you go into your documents, and uh, so there are those two documents. And you also have the description copied over. So if you were to come in into this file and click on documents, you right away know chronologically all the step-by-step -step documents that you have to generate and you have generated and stored. Okay? So if I were to click on this PDF document, it, right from EULA, it opens that particular document. So here's your conflict screening form. Okay? Or it could be that invoice that you just generated. Or someone else in your firm generated, right? That you can review. So for $200. The interesting part, a very in interesting part, is what we, are we see our clients doing. They extend our capabilities and they really surprise us many times. Uh, a very recent client showed me how they actually get a shareable link and they compose an email um, and then they actually send it to their client. Okay? Alrighty, so you can obviously collaborate and you can have those components within this and then you can obviously drag and drop the same features that you had with the OneDrive you can do the same thing here as well. Okay? So now let's move on to the next maybe interesting use case where we've recently introduced the ability for you to store accounting related documents as well. So obviously you noticed that there were matter related documents that you could store. And before I forget, you can also go back to your contacts once you've created the file. Right? So let's say for Shelley. You can actually go into a contact, and you can do this at your leisure. Uh, very important, but audit documents all under our compliance panel. 
Um, you can do our conflict screening report right here. You can generate her source of contact report, okay, or any fee books that she may have. So you can always generate that after the fact. So keep in mind, within the context, you, did gen you know, pretty much generate all of the matter-related documents. Could be the invoice, statement of activities, all your client data verification, the retainer letter. You can have that. You know, just like the other example I shared, you could have a retainer letter drafted. You can store it in your Google Drive and share that with your client for them to review, sign, and send back to you. Okay. So. Google Drive as a product by itself gives you all those great capabilities. And they are obviously seamlessly available to you right with the new law purely based on our settings and how you integrated it by choosing the appropriate product that you want your law to integrate with. Okay? So now let's move on to our accounts. As you know, or for those who are new, this is truly our legal accounting and business accounting space. This is where you can bring all of your business expenses. These are places where you're going to generate all of your ledgers and your reconciliations. So you see a tab called Documents. So obviously right now there are no documents um, within the accounting section. Now this is a place that you could pretty much be innovative and start to store any of the accounting-related information. Okay. If I were to go into my compliance panel, I can do a quick re trust reconciliation. Great. I'm up to date with my reconciliation. So I'm not going to be able to do that unless I quickly add a retainer and show you that. But I'm sure you get the point. I guess a bad example for a retainer would have been that case. I'm just going to go back. I'll probably show you a different example. Now that we're up to date with all our reconciliation, why don't we generate our ledgers, right? Let me generate my trust ledger and I'll do it for the month of February. Fairly recent, but I'll still go ahead and say from first to now, let me download it. Now let's say you generated that ledger, right? Just like how you did it for your matter documents, and this would apply both for your OneDrive as well as your Google Drive, of course, um, you would now be able to go into ULaw or the Google Drive. And through that integration, under ULaw practice, we had our focus merely on matter, right? Which had all the matter numbers. Whereas in the accounts, what we do is we divvy it up by the year. Okay, so these are the financial documents for the particular year. And you can customize this as you feel fit. And then we start to create the months in that year. Okay, and let me say for the month of February, drag and drop in a particular trust ledger. Exactly what you should expect. You go into your accounts and go into your documents, and there is your trust ledger. And just like your matter, you should be able to open it up right here. Okay, so here's your trust ledger as well. Now, it doesn't stop there. Now, for the purposes of uh, today's demonstration, okay, let me show you a quick example of how you can use this integrated capacity of ULaw and Google Drive, and as well as OneDrive, to start to bring in some of your financial receipts as well. Okay? So I actually have in front of me a receipt from Walmart. Okay? And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and simulate my phone to you. Okay, so this is my phone. 
And I've basically opened up my My Drive app. So you can see I have my drive. I have one drive. And if I go into my drive, and I'm basically logged in as myself, you can see I have my ULA practice. Okay? It's the same user interface, but from an appified version of Google Drive, the same version of this, right? We get into accounts. You see exactly the same component. You click on February, and you see the trust ledger that you should see here as well. Okay? Exactly the same thing, both, right? Now what I want you to take in mind is how do I extend this capability for more pragmatic reasons? So let's say you've just purchased as an office expense something in Walmart using a business credit card. Make it a habit if you can right away when you get to your uh, car, when you get back to it, and you use this plus symbol that you see right here. Okay, I'm going to hit that plus symbol. And it asks me, all right, do I want to upload? So basically you can upload it if you've got it as an email attachment. Um, right? Or I'm going to do the scan. And I'm basically going to, so this is the, uh, when I clicked on the blue button, and again, you can be better at, you know, waiting for the right photo shot of it. But I'm basically just uploaded it, and you can see that's made available right here. What does that mean? What that means is when I go into ULA, that document would be made available right here. So not only are you able to generate documents from within EULA, obviously this is a really bad example, but you get the point, right? I was able to bring in not just a document that I generated out of EULA, I showed you an example of how you can scan a driver's license. If you took a photo or you scanned, it was a JPEG. And now I've shown you the capability and you can start to use it like right now. Start using the whole Google Drive um, app integrated with ULaw to start to bring in your financial documents or any other documents. I mean, if you have a Word document that's matter-related, you can obviously do that. You can extend the capability of you know, Google Drive to share, create these shareable links, which is a really cool feature. Um, you know, use the shareable link or if this is an internal share, you can do it within your firm by using the share here, right? And and start to collaborate and start to be more productive and very much on the go, okay? A, a really good question is how much of storage space do you think an average firm would need? I would think 15 gigabytes is quite a bit of storage space. I mean, I, I sincerely believe um, that's a lot of storage, <laughs> so an average firm would that, that, yeah, that would be quite a bit. But that being said, as I said, um, storage is highly commoditized in today's market. Um, so if I were to go back into my OneDrive, right? You could go to a premium of almost one terabyte, okay? So basically, as I said, OneDrive gives you about 5 gigabytes, and I've only used about 1.9 megabytes, whereas Google Drive gives you up to 15 gigabytes, right? That's a lot of storage. Um, okay, so I hope that was um, something new for you to look for today, so really basically using the Google Drive component of it, right? Um, you can do the same thing with OneDrive too. So I'm sure someone would have asked me that, and there you go. Okay, so we do have another 10 minutes in today's webinar, so I will take that time. I was not quite prepared. I will take that time, and hopefully this works. You can see I've got the whole 2018. I already have something for February. I don't have anything for FEP um, within my OneDrive. So obviously to make that switch, I'll have to go back to settings, switch to Microsoft OneDrive. Good question, what phone am I using? I'm using a Samsung S7. And this is pretty standard 
uh, OneDrive and Google Drive's apps. You can go to the Play Store. Yeah, you can go to Play Store and download OneDrive and provide the same credentials. Same thing with Google Drive. Pretty standard with all phones today. Okay. So we used OneDrive. I go into Accounts. Refresh. Obviously, should not see anything. Okay. Let me see if I can bring up my phone right here. I'm going to go into my OneDrive app. There's an app for that as well, not now. I mean, they obviously keep sending you all these different offers, right? And you can see I've got the same structure. Let me bring that up side by side. So you've got the same, you know, you all practice, right? Same structure, accounts matter. So I click on Accounts. You can see it's 2018. I go to Feb. And you see it's the same standard plus symbol. Everybody started using that, right? So let me go to Accounts and I'll show you. 2018. February. So really you can keep this as, as well organized as you want it to be. I'll do the same concept. I'll hit Plus and I will say Scan. And I will scan the same document. They're pushing for go premium, go premium. That's one hassle that you've got to deal with. But if you were to buy that premium one time, uh, then you don't have to deal with that. So I say done. It gives you the flexibility to change this. You could say, um, what I would suggest is if it's a disbursement or an expense, you could say business expense. Center. And you can even set the save location. You can change that if you like. And hit upload. It's going to basically upload it. And the fact that this app is connected with this, uh, with the overall OneDrive, instantaneously gives you the marriage into this. Right? So it went from this to this. So making it very convenient for you to now starting using your phone to bring in all of your expenses, uh, the receipts, sorry. So we obviously looked at, um, you can start to, yeah, so rather than scanning, um, yeah, you could take a picture too. So as you said, when you hit plus, it does ask you uh, whether you want to scan or upload. So if you use upload, it's going to ask you for your photo picture or photo library and you can choose that particular photo that you took off your receipt. Okay? That's a really good question, yes. If scanning is not your thing, especially with um, Google Drive, I, I find the OneDrive scanner to be very, really, really good. Or even better, I would suggest using, um, you know, uh, using Evernote to scan it, if you have. I think a lot of apps come with, uh, a lot of phones come with Evernote. So I would go with Evernote use the Evernote scanner, just be smart that way. Once you scan it, it, made, it is made a part of your photo library, and then come into OneDrive and use that photo library image and bring it into Eula. Okay? So the key takeaway, obviously, is we want to provide you with the tools that are important for you to manage your documents at every step of your workflow. So it's not just during client intake, we do have certain documents you can do there. It's during creation of matter, closing of matter, statement of activity, all of that cool stuff. But then even when you have to manage your own business, manage all of your business expenses, ensure you've got all your financial transactions done, you can even create subfolders called audit readiness or audit and start to throw in all your reconciliation statements as you generate them. Because when time comes to audit, you're all well prepared. You've got all the documents ready to go, right? So with every reconciliation, you may want to generate the appropriate journals and trust ledgers, for example. And with those four documents for that month, you're pretty much done. And if the auditor comes up, you're just going to say, hey, here's your January, here's your reconciliation, here's your trust, and here's your four documents that I know you would ask me for, okay? And all of that comes right out of you. You don't even have to think of what that is. Because if you come under accounts and come into compliance, we basically have you covered in 
highlighting almost every possible Law Society accounting document that they may ask you for. Starting with reconciliation, with your trust ledger, your trust receipt, you know, that's the receipt journal as well as your payment journal. Okay? And again, if you are into real estate, if you're into certain silos of practice and certain components apply, you may want to do your intermatter trust transfer. If you do a lot of electronic trans you know, trust transfers, you can regenerate those form nine A's if you like for the whole month of January. It's a very recent yet very cool feature that I think that saves a lot of time. It basically gives you an overview, a history audit trail of every Form 9A that you have generated that month. So you can generate this at even during at the time of the audit. So it tells them exactly all the Form 9As that you've uh, you have on record. Okay. Um, so with that, I probably would like to have have the floor open for any questions that you may have. I know we've got a lot of friends today. I'm really happy that a lot of questions that are being asked. Um, and I continue for you to ask those questions so that this can be a, a more of a, a dialogue. The key takeaway, and you know, we've integrated with Google Drive, OneDrive, a big part of our roadmap, um, is definitely connecting with Dropbox, Box. Um, you know, and further extending those capabilities. Uh, as just a, a final housekeeping note, I sincerely request you to provide us your attendance. Um, we've sent you a link uh, to an email that we sent you as part of this webinar. We'd like you to, you know, tell us that you've been here, send us your feedback on how we can make this presentation better. This particular topic where I looked at OneDrive and Google Drive's app feature was a request that was made by one of our uh, webinar audience members from our last webinar in December. We do our best to listen to you and you know, provide content that's meaningful and hopefully it's a learning experience. Okay. Um, next week we have yet another very interesting space that we've got into recently where we're starting to integrate um, ULaw with third-party payment gateways, and one of the most recent and very really robust gateway providers uh, that we work with, uh, we work with TD. We're very proud to have integrated with TD um, that provides a very robust, uh, very powerful payment gateway, and we'll definitely demonstrate that to you as well. Okay. So I will have the floor open for a few more minutes. To encourage you to ask any questions that you may have, and uh, yeah, please feel don't feel shy. Shoot your questions; we're happy to help. Okay, one question we have is about the pricing plan. So uh, within our chat window, I believe we have provided you with a link that takes you to the different pricing plans. So let me see if I can do something here. I might just be able to open up and just kind of give you a very high-level overview. Um, if I go into my drive, and if I want to say upgrade storage, there you go. So that's kind of really your pricing. So for 100 GB pricing, so right now I have about 3.3 you know, use out of my free space. So if you need 100 GB, it's about $3 a month. Or if you were to pay uh, annually, it's, it's only $30 a year. Or if you pay the $130 or $140, you get the one terabyte. And this is Google, okay? And if I were to go with OneDrive, So let's remember, this was $30 and $140. Okay, so this is slightly more expensive, or probably not. Uh, for about $109 a year, 
you get almost five terabytes of space. Wow. Um, but that's with Office 365. You've purchased that. Or with just OneDrive alone, for about $3 a month, you get about 50 gigabytes. So from a pure place storage space, Google Drive is still more competitive. So you've got, um, you know, for the same $3, you have 100 gigabytes, whereas uh, OneDrive gives you, for the same $3, 50 gigabytes. Just, okay, again, I'll be honest, it's a lot of storage. I don't think you're going to be using that much storage. Uh, but if you, as I said, if you already have Office 365, it obviously comes with some added perks. Okay? Hope that answered that question. Um, I think there's an interesting question, uh, maybe out of context for today's webinar, but we'll still take it. Um, the question is whether if there's an accounting discrepancy um, or a number reversal, do we have to reverse the entire entry out um, like in any other generic accounting software? Um, we are an accounting software regardless. The, today's um, CPD, uh, today's presentation is not accredited for any CPD. Uh, our previous webinar was uh, for everything practice management that we delivered last week as accredited for CPD hours. Okay. So I think our support staff uh, answered that question with regards to uh, the question around reversal of the entry. But then we're actually able to, we'd love to take that offline and uh, answer that question in further detail because we would obviously love to understand your situation. But the very high level quick answer is yes, we, we, we are able to reverse that entry like any other accounting software and give you that capability. Sorry, this, um, yes, the CPD is not accredited for any CPD. Um, this webinar is not accredited for any CPD. It's been a long day. All right, so if there are further questions, please feel free to use the link we've sent you, and that's the whole purpose of us wanting to get your feedback. Send us your feedback, and we're willing to listen. Okay? Thank you very much. And uh, once again, thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you in our webinar next week. Take care.